daughter-in-law, um, and I want to learn how to get more listings. Okay? All right, don't let my chicken scratch handwriting. Okay, now we're just going to go like zigzag straight around the room. We'll go this way and then we'll hit that side. So, Danielle, you're next. Um, definitely need to get my first listing, so I would love to do that. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, I've seen the same thing. I just get a listing because I haven't had one yet. Um, I've just had buyers and just find ways to be like the best listening to you can do that. <laughs> cool. And we'll go back to Paul. Wait, yeah, same the thing. Back to Paul. Same on this side. Okay, I'm sorry. I don't know your name. Vince. Vince. Oh, that's easy. That's my call. Vince Caesar, I need to get more listings and get more comfortable with the process. Okay. More listings and more comfortable with the process. Holly? I'm Holly and I'm Paul, and yeah, I would love to get my first listing. Go ahead, who's next? Um, Heather, um, also get listings, but um, and also like listing presentations. Mm -hmm. Okay, keep going. Um, and I'm Becca, uh, going off with um, listing presentations, like once you have a listing appointment, how to close the deal. How about you, Barb? Well, I'm Barb. <laughs> um, I'm, the, I'm the coach. And um, in addition to what uh, everybody said, I hope that uh, you're going to share some of your great marketing tips once you have the listing. Taking notes because we have a very rough outline, so we're going to try to touch upon everything. Greg Holmes? Uh, all of that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so Greg is Greg's on our team, and he is the yin to our yang. He is the guy that keeps us balanced. And Poor Greg. <laughs> so just want to let you guys know that we've never taught this class before, and to be completely honest with you, Brooke and I haven't talked about this for more than about 30 seconds before we got here. I threw an outline together because our system is exactly the same. Um, we pretty much do the same thing every time, and once you get started, you'll find out it's not rocket science, it's just doing what you have to do to get it done and sticking to your word. Um, listings are the absolute, in my opinion, and in any realtor's opinion who has been in the business for any amount of time, will tell you that listings are much easier than buyers because basically, I think somebody's trying to get in. Hi. Hello. So listings are easier really because once you have a listing, someone else is doing the running around. Of course you have to market it and do all that, but there's nothing simpler than listing it, putting your sign on marketing from wherever you are instead of being in a bar running around with buyers. Um, have any of you, I, I don't most of you are newer in the business, right? Okay. Brooke and I refer to our sphere of influence as VIPs. So you'll hear us say VIPs throughout this presentation. And a VIP is nothing more than people that you know or people who know people that you know. So that's what we say, that's what we mean when we say VIP. Um, 
Brooke and I do a class in Ignite, which we haven't done since the whole COVID thing, but it's called Build Your Database. And everything we do and everything we teach will talk to you guys about building your database. I can't stress it enough. I'm sure, Barb, you're probably pounding it in your classes. But the bigger your database, the bigger your bank account. And when we say database, it's every single person you know in your life, everybody that you can possibly think of, whether you know them, it's a close family member, whether it's a friend of a friend, whether it's someone that you just met at your kid's soccer game, whatever. If you meet somebody and you have eye contact and you have a conversation, they should be on your database. And it might start with just a name, but then you're going to expand on building their address, their email address, their Facebook, you're going to friend request them, and that's all the stuff we're going to get into. But with regard to listings, the majority of our listings, and you'll find when you start really getting listings and starting to produce more, that the majority of your listings, although you can do a ton of marketing, which we're going to talk about, are going to come from people that you know and referrals. It's a fact. Um, and truth be told, a lot of the agents that I know that have been in the business for a long time, if you're in the business for a long time and you constantly have to find new business, cold business, strange business, then you're doing something wrong. Your business, your most comfortable business is people that know you, like you, trust you, and refer you. So once you have a relationship, once you do a deal, once you have, you never want to let that person get away from you, ever. They should be yours forever. There's nothing crazier than when we go on a listing appointment and somebody says, we just moved here three years ago, five years ago, six years ago, seven years ago, whatever. And we say, oh, like, who was your agent? And they go, hmm, can't remember. Well, shame on that agent because I'm going to tell you right now, nobody's forgetting me. Nobody's forgetting her. Nobody's forgetting you. Like, we will never let you forget us. And then, so, um, sorry, I came in, so I don't know what you touched on. But also, once we sell a house, like if you're representing the buyer, we always add, no, if you're representing the seller, we always add that new buyer, even though when the buyer moves in, they weren't our client, we always add them to our um, VIP list. Because guess what? They're probably not going to live there forever. So you add the new buyer to your VIP list and you continue to market. How many times have we had the exact same listing, like the house, physically, with different clients and probably So like or we're, Brooke houses. and I will list a house, we are listing, our signs on the line. We sell the house. That new buyer now goes on our database. I don't care if they were Joe Schmo's client, I don't care. They're going on my database. They're going to get my mailings. If I have their email, they'll get my email, but usually it's just an address. They're going to get our stuff, and guess what? Like she said, there's many a time we go back a couple years later and end up listing that house because shame on their realtor, they lost contact. They get our postcards, just listed, just sold, open house, just listed, just sold, here's our production, here's what we're doing. They know that we are serious and we're in the business, and who are they gonna call to list their house if they haven't heard from much from their agent? So just to fill you in, I kinda just didn't get very far. But, um, so I talked about VIPs, our sphere of influence, building your database. So for the newer agents, or even the not so new agents, if you're not doing it, you need a database. I don't care what your system is. My system is an old fashioned nothing. It is basically a Word document with every single email on there in alphabetical order. Don't ask me who's what, I don't know. They go in my Gmail, if you don't have Gmail, get it. You can't work this well. It would be very difficult for you to work this business without Gmail. Every time you have a contact, they should go in your Gmail, in your in your notes in that Gmail, should be how did you meet them? What is their dog's name? What are their kids' names? What was the date you met them? Oh, they had a baby that they just told you was born on July 2nd, 2020. Write it down. Write it down. Yeah. Um, for those of you who are newer and you were working a lot in command, everything that Phil is saying you can do in command. You can add the activity, you can add all sorts of notes. So everything she's saying is absolutely true. You can keep it all in one place. And by the way, your KW email is Gmail. So you do have Gmail. And what Barb is saying about command is amazing. What an amazing tool. The problem that I have is from being in the business 30 something years, unfortunately for me, 
Maureen, you're in the same boat. I know it really, <laughs> with thousands of contacts, it's just extremely difficult at this point in my time, in my life to get everything in the command, but hey, you guys have it right here in your hand. When Brooke and I are with someone, that let's just say we go on a listing of women, and I'm getting off tangent, but we will come back, and we walk into it a listing. And let's just say we go there and they say, the, they talk to Fluffy, the dog. Seems crazy, but we write down the name Fluffy. Now, I put it in my Gmail notes because if I'm out at a party and I just run into Barb, and I'm looking at my notes, and I know Fluffy's super important to her, I might run to the bathroom and do what I have to do, and I look up Barb, and I go on my notes, and I'll be like, Fluffy, oh, how's Fluffy? Did she have her puppy? Whatever. It sounds ridiculous, but let me tell you something, guys. Holly, like, you're laughing. I guarantee um, you, like, yeah. half of the listings I mean, that they've gotten part. were from remembering, like, their pets or their this or their You know what it is, whatever. guys? And I can just tell you this. Selling real estate isn't it about selling real estate. It's not about selling houses. I don't sell anything. I educate. I educate. I teach. I do the best job that I can with negotiating. I don't sell anything. A house sells itself. I don't try to sell anything. I just try to be a good educator, make sure you get the best deal you get, you're not overpaying. But it's all about one thing, building relationships. This is a relationship building business. I'm gonna applaud you there too. So like with anything, not necessarily listings, like if you're talking to somebody, so let's say, for example, I went on a listing, uh, I mean, I had a listing last week and it closed last week. And my seller was going through um, some medical stuff and I knew that she had an appointment on Tuesday. Now this was like almost a whole month after our deal closed. But I would text her every once in a while and say, hey, just wanted to check in, how are you feeling? Because I really do care. But they know that I care and they've continued to refer me so much business in the two months that I've had their house listed. So she told me last time I checked in to see how she was feeling, she said, I have a procedure Tuesday and I'll find a lot out on Tuesday. So immediately, before I did anything and got into something else to forget about that, I went right to my old fashioned planner book and on Tuesday, I put a giant star at the very top of my morning and I said, text Trish and wish her well. Because that is super important to somebody. And as soon as I got up Tuesday and I opened my schedule, that was the first thing that I did Tuesday morning. And you know what her reply was? Thanks so much, Brooke, this text just meant the world to me. So like, again, it's little. because I care, but stuff like that, it doesn't have to be a current client. It could be a past client. It could be somebody who you don't even barely know that you see is going through something on Facebook. It's important, build that relationship now and you'll get the business from them in the future. So this might seem like, well, this have, have this have anything to do with listings? It has everything to do with listings because the pe when people know you, like you, and trust you on a personal level, guess what, guys? They don't care how much you sold. They don't care how many listings you have. When Brooke came into the business, she'd be like, oh my gosh, Mom, how am I ever going to get a listing? Like, I don't have any sales. I'm so young. Who's going to I'm so me? young. And, and guess what, guys? I could probably, I think maybe one time, twice, ever. Does anybody even ask? Let me just tell you one thing. This business is not about you. It's about them. You need to pay attention to what they want. You need to pay attention to what their needs are and what is important to them. They really could care less about you and your production. I know plenty of agents that go out there, oh, I sold this, I sold that, here's my production, I got this many sales, but who cares? Woo woo, good for you. They care about one thing. What are you going to do for me? How are you gonna promote my house? Where are you going to advertise? Are you going to get me the most possible? How are you going to do that? We'll back into that. But bottom line is, Brooke and I don't talk about us. We talk about you. And we look for your hot spot. We look for the things that are important. So we, uh, and you can look at the outline roughly, but we promote through email, postcards, Facebooks, Facebook, Facebook, Facebook. Facebook. I'll pass these cards around. These are just a couple samples of um, what we do. Um, we usually do a team postcard, not enough, but probably now it's about once every two months. It should be really once a, once a month. Usually, it's a just listed and it's a just sold. Who are you mailing these to? Everybody you know in your whole life. And you know what, guys? Brooke and I and Greg, we use planners, old-fashioned planners. Maureen, you bet you do too. Yep. If you're going to be successful in this business, I know phones are great and the calendars on your phones are super great and it's cool and you're techy and it's the thing of the times. Guess what, guys? If you're productive and you're selling lots of houses, and I know you will be, if you miss one step, you could really be in trouble. 
you could really cost somebody money, you could cost somebody a lot. So we live by our planners, and while it's great to use your phones too, keep a planner. Um, with regard to how we're promoting to get listings, we say email, we do a client email, usually once a month. It's free, guys. You should be gathering- What's a client email? A client email, if you want to gather the emails of everybody you know and continue to always expand on that. I personally, again, it's nice to show your production once in a while. I don't know. I don't like braggers and I don't like boasters. And I kind of feel sometimes when you're like, oh, I did this and I did Yeah, well, who cares? I don't know. Like, mm. That's, That's a very, very me. small percentage of your clients will even ask for care. Yeah. So usually we'll do like promote things like try to give a good tip. Like, let's just say that one of our lenders in this office says, hey, we have a new program called First Front Door. Hey, guys, I uh, hope you're having a great fall. There's a program out for our potential buyers called First Front Door, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, would you believe um, us if we always offer some sort of useful information? Would we? Would you believe me if I told you that I could potentially get you in the, in the door of a house for less than $2,500 out of pocket um, with this awesome program? Now, of course, you have to say like income requirements and stuff like that in that email because you have to protect yourself. But go to any of these lenders, see what valuable information, because guess what? Nobody knows that they can buy a house for $2,500. Wait, what? That's even a thing? And you might get somebody who said, you know, that sounds really great. Can you see if I can qualify for that? And guess what? They took the bait, now reel them in and close the deal. Because if you get that little bit, you're going to have to, even if it's three years from now, stick with them and they'll eventually be a client. What's that called again? First front door. And there's another one, Megan, called PHFA. And they're not all the time, like first front door. It has stipulation. But I'm just, we're just saying, Meg, that just find a piece of bait. Find something. And we love to do just listed, just sold, um, open house, whatever. But it's nice to throw out things that are giving people information that they want to read your email. We do a lot with donations. Um, I have a special place in my heart for veterans. I like to do stuff for veterans. Um, we build yourself a logo, mine's the American flag. Anybody that knows me, I mean, they're always putting flag things on my desk and ice cream cones. Pick your, pick your whatever it is. Brooks might be Rottweilers and Stumps. You know, everybody, pick, find something, find a niche, whether it's your grandchildren or whatever it is that's about you and make that your thing. Um, so that's an email, that's a client email, it's free. The postcards are going around. Um, does anybody remember those, or actually you probably get them in the mail, those big blue coupons that you tend to get like every month in the mail or every couple of hours? What are they? Those big blue coupons. Bath and Beyond. Bath and Beyond. Well, isn't that crazy that you just, you don't even have to look to know what that is. You just see that blue coupon and you know it's a Bed Bath and Beyond coupon. So when you guys develop your postcards, and we use Vistaprint, um, it's relatively inexpensive. Um, make your postcards look the same. Pick your brand or whatever. Now, as new agents, you're saying, well, how am I going to get a listing? Again, this is just one teeny little piece of building relationships, of getting your name out there. Um, but if you're a new agent and you say, well, I want to promote a just listed or a just sold, guess what, guys? There's a lot of just listed and just solds in this office, even if it's not you. Ask an agent, ask us anytime. You want to promote one of our listings, knock yourself out. Yeah, by all means. If you want to do it just so, we don't care, but ask first. And then um, um, getting started, guys, like I know like the $500,000 stuff's really great, and who doesn't want to do that? But if you post like the $250,000 and under stuff on your Facebook page, you're going to get a lot more interaction on something like that than you are on a five, six, seven hundred thousand dollars dollars house because you have a broader prospect for that property. So get your get yourselves in the habit for now, starting to post some one hundred thousand, two hundred thousand dollar stuff, and that will create like if somebody tags somebody in it, if Megan tags Haley in this post that I just put up, to me, I think Megan knows Haley wants to buy a house. So I'm gonna request Haley and I'm gonna keep Haley, I'm gonna message her and try to get her as a buyer. Um so definitely like don't try to do only the best stuff. Like some of our biggest deals come from some of our smallest deals. Um, so don't be afraid to like put smaller end stuff out there too. Hey, you might pick up an investor, right? Like has mega, mega luck with these investors. Like he'll do, he'll, he'll come to us and be like, guys, what should I do? It's a $30,000 house with a $500 commission. And we're like, just take it. Yes, it's a terrible commission, but guess what? You're going to get 10 other deals from it. And isn't that the trade card? Yes. So with regard to Facebook, um, if you guys aren't on Facebook as your own name, you need to be, because people don't know who Mary Schmary is. 
um, than who Mary Smith is. So I'm Honest Phyllis May Lynch, she's Honest Brooke May Lynch. Be your name, be who you are. We have a business page and we have a personal page. I can tell you that I'm about to delete my business page. I don't even use it. My business, and I would say probably most of Brooke's business has come from Facebook. And it might sound crazy, but guess what guys? In this world that we're in, people love when they don't have to talk to you. They love the whole uh, phone, techie, email, you know, now you're not going to always deal with that. So, you know, usually when you're dealing sometimes with older clients or whatever, they don't want anything to do with it. But if you don't have a Facebook page, create one. Start, if we say treat Facebook like your job. You should be on there every single day, many times a day. You're friend requesting every single person you know as you're building that database. When you look up Haley Petransky on, and you see her on Facebook, go to her friend list. See who you know on Haley's friend list. Oh, I know him, I know her. Start friend requesting. Guess what, guys? It might sound creepy and it might sound crazy. And people might see your just listed and just sold. But guess what? And they might think like, oh, whatever, she sells real estate. Maybe they won't pay attention to you right now, but when they need a house or when they need to sell a house, they're going to remember you. Trust me. And I, trust me, because I request everybody, whether I know you or not, <laughs> you talk to me one time and tell me you're you're interested in real estate or somebody tagged you in one of my real estate posts and I message you and you respond to it, I'm adding you as a friend. I've sold so many people houses and I'm Facebook friends with them. And when I get to the settlement table, I say, you know, I got to ask it. How do we become Facebook friends? Like, how do I even know you? And they laugh and they're like, I don't know. We're just friends on Facebook and I always see your stuff. And I'm like, boom, worked. And so, it sounds crazy, but it's really the truth. It's really, really the truth. And I say treat, treat, treat Facebook like your job. Here's the thing. I don't even use my business page. It's probably been, I don't even know, probably a year since I've even put anything on there. But on my personal page, just listed, just sold. Here's my grandson. Here's my puppy. I'm taking a ride on the beach. Just listed, I'm going for a walk, just sold. So although you're putting your personal stuff on there, every few posts is pertaining to real estate. And do put personal stuff, because people want to see that you're real people, 100%. People want to see that you're real, for sure. And again, it, it's neat because, if, especially if you do, I mean, we like charities just because we feel very fortunate in what we have. We feel that everybody that is fortunate should give back somehow. Believe it or not, too, people like that. So if you have a friend that maybe has a child with autism, say, maybe you see there's a, an autism something something. Maybe you could do like a little support thing and raise, do a, whatever, do a walk, whatever. I'm just making that up. But if you see something or participate that, in something that somebody else is hosting, that's right. even easier. Right. So it's just ways, again, that we're building relationships. Oh, <laughs> <Aww. laughs> ways that we're building relationships. So again, on the, on the personal page, it's just listed, just sold, and then you know, like you're always doing that. Um, and then um, I wanted to touch on this, but we kind of got off tangent. So another thing on Facebook that you can do, which is very hit or miss, um, but if it's a if it's a hit, it's a good hit. So occasionally we'll put something on Facebook saying, hey, we're looking for a townhome in Aston or whatever. If anybody knows of something coming up for sale or has considered selling, can you shoot us a message? And we, again, they're very hit or miss. Most of the times they're miss. But once in a while, you'll get somebody who will send you a message and they're like, hey, yeah, I have a townhome in Aston. Um, and then you could potentially get a listing or you know, get a buyer in the door. Um, so that's an awesome little So it's funny that Brooke says town in Aston because with exactly what she's saying, I did just that. And truth be told, I didn't really have a buyer that needed a house in Aston. But I put on Facebook, does anyone know anyone looking to sell their home in Aston? Buyers are waiting or something like that. We ended up getting the listing. It was a townhouse that sold in like one day. Um, I want to say, I think it was, I don't know, 290. Okay, so two something. Okay, so. Uh, about seven thousand dollar commission, and then we sold them a house in Delaware. It was twenty five, so another twelve thousand. So my little From one Facebook my post. little Facebook post that was free ended up, you know, making well over twenty thousand yeah, dollars. And so. now that girl refers us to a million people. And the thing is, here's the thing, and I say this about everything, including open houses. You're not, it's not going to be a hit every time. That's this business. You know what, guys? If you're in this business and you're working it every day and you're working it all day, if you go to work, you're going to go to work for how many hours a week? 40? Whatever. Put half that time into doing the things we're talking about, treating Facebook like your job, developing client emails, 
putting posts together, sending out postcards, playing around with the bright to know the system and, and know what's for sale so that you kind of know what you're talking about and selling. You're going to know your business. Um, the main thing now is ask for referrals. Ask. Brooke does a do your Facebook then. What is your Facebook? You want I send personal messages to people on Facebook. This is my way of lead generating. I'm not interested in picking up the phone to call you. To be very honest, I'm too busy to do that. And I'm, I, I don't want to get stuck talking to somebody for 20 minutes. To me, it's a waste of time. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to shoot you either a text message or a direct message on Facebook. And what I say is, hey, Paul, I hope all is well. I'm having a referral competition at work, and I need your help. Who do you know looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate? Not, do you know anyone? Who do you know? It's more direct, and they're actually going to take the time to think about it. A bunch of people won't even answer you, but guess what? When they do think of somebody, they will come back to your message. It might be a year later, but they will. Um, and then, I mean, Greg and I really did have a contest with this. Actually, a couple years ago, we did with, a, with a, a script thing in the morning, and we all did it together. Um, and we all held each other accountable. And the results were amazing. Like you really truly get leads from ask, when you ask for leads, you really truly Especially get Especially if people know you, like you and trust you. I mean, and then they really think you're really having, I mean, you are having a referral competition between each other, um, but they want to help you win, which is cool because then they're going to think about it even, even more. Yeah, so, and if anybody ever mentions selling a house, the thing is in this business, you know, you have to, we always say Keller Williams, we talk about the drunk monkey. It's the little guy on your shoulder going, that's not going to work. You can't do that. Never going to work. Never going to yeah, work. They don't, well, they don't know. We always say, get the drunk monkey off your back. Because what we're saying, you might be like, this is creepy. It's weird. You know, you're reaching out to people or whatever. But you know what, guys? When they need you, they need you. And I can't even tell you, like, from high school. Like, I have people on my list that I haven't seen since high school. And I'm listing their houses, their parents' houses, their grandmother's houses. Like, people that I haven't seen in years and years and years. So kind of beating Facebook up. But the bottom line is whatever you do, don't be afraid to say to somebody, hey, I'm in real estate. Who do you know looking to buy, sell, or invest? It's okay. They might say nobody. Who cares? But if they give you one hit, and you know what, guys? We always say you're building the groundwork. You might get a referral, and it might not mean anything today. But if you get a clue that somebody is thinking about buying or selling, maybe it's next month. Maybe it's not until they say next year. Don't let them get away. Open your planner and flip to a year from now and say, follow up with Megan. She's thinking about buying this year. But in the meantime, Megan's going to get your postcard. She's going to get your email. She's going to see you on Facebook. So, But seriously, though, if somebody responds to that message and says, yeah, I'm interested in buying, but not till 2022. If you say, okay, no problem, like check in with me then or I'll check in with you then, and you don't do anything with that, are you going to really remember that somebody wanted to buy a house in 2022? No, you're not. So before you leave that message page, open your planner or whatever you use that works for you and flip to 2021. First month, January. Hey, Megan, I know it was on your bucket list to buy a house this year. How you looking? Like, whatever. Can I be of any help? Do you have any questions? I'm going to get you connected with some lenders so that you're ready when you decide that you're ready. All that stuff. All for the information. Um, but before we go on, I know, and sorry, Paul, I'm putting you on the spot, but Paul shouted with me the other day, so I know like a little bit about Paul. So Paul isn't from around here, so Facebook is a little more difficult for him. So I want to touch on how to get potential people from open houses before we move on to the next subject. Um, so sitting in an open house, always awesome to door knock the neighborhood before you sit that open house. Invite the neighbors. Most times they love their neighborhood and you know, who wouldn't want to pick their new neighbors? So go door knock. Hey, I just wanted to invite you to our open house today from one to three. Love to see you there. A lot of people aren't going to answer the door. Some people are going to answer the door and they're going to be like, what do you want? What are you trying to sell me? And then some people are going to be like, oh, you listed number four. You know, what's the price? Have you had any activity? They're going to be very interested. Well, the people who are very interested, we're going to say, I'm sorry, what was your name? Oh, okay, it was very nice to meet you. Um, you know, thanks so much for your time. I'd love for you to come through the open house and see how your house compares to number four. Bye-bye, have a nice day, don't waste their time, leave. Soon as you walk down that driveway, open your Gmail notes and send your, or your Gmail, what we do is we send ourselves an email so that when we're back to our desk, we don't forget to add them. So we talked to the seller at number six and her name was Mary and um, Mary was very interested in what the neighborhood was doing, blah, 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 so we sent ourselves an email. 
as soon as we get done our open house, if we're door knocking that same day, we're gonna go home. Now I sent myself an email because if not, I would forget to I would forget her name, I would forget her street number and all that fancy stuff. And I'm gonna get a note card and I'm gonna hand write a thank you card. Hi Mary, it was so nice to meet you this morning. Um, so nice talking to you. If I can be of any help, please let me know, blah, 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 whatever. Stick my card in there and drop it in the mail that day or the next morning. If it's any longer than that, forget it. You just wasted your whole day going on. And then add her to your database. <clears throat> she talk to you. She knows you're a realtor. Maybe she's interested in selling. Maybe she's not. But guess what? You just made yourself another contact. So everybody that you talk to, make sure you add them. It's not creepy. Eventually she's gonna to wanna to sell or he's gonna to wanna to sell or they know somebody who's gonna to wanna to sell or maybe they know somebody who wants to move into the neighborhood. Sometimes you'll just get the newsy neighbor who wants to know, but that's okay, they're even better because guess what? They talk a lot. So add them, add them, add them. So as far as open houses go, for new agents, for agents that aren't from the area, Guess what? There is no easier way because people are walking into you. Now, a lot of people are already represented. I get that. Treat this like a numbers game. Don't get discouraged. I always say, if you're going to give up your Sunday to do an open house, why don't you do two? Do one from 11 to 1 and another from 2 to 4. Use your day. Guess what? you got the signs in your car. You're ready to go. Do two. And guess what? If you don't work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, oh well, so what? You just did open houses. Now, don't get discouraged when you do one and nobody comes. When you do another one, nobody comes. Guess what, I guarantee you, I would guarantee every one of you anything I have, but if you set two open houses on a Sunday and that's all you did, that you will get at least one lead, at least one. I mean, you're probably gonna get more if you work it. But when you leave that open house, like Brooke said, go to the dollar store, buy Keep yourself them in your some. love box. Keep them in your center console. Have them with you. And when people sign in, give you addresses or whatever, don't be like, oh, that's creepy. I'm not going to send them anything. Why not? Guess what? What are they going to do? Be like, oh, that weirdo. Email me, throw on the trap. Guess what? what? We don't care if they have an agent either. We're still thanking them for coming. It's not stepping on anybody's toes. All we're saying, it was, it was so nice to meet you at our open house. Becca, thanks so much for stopping by. That's it. We're not saying we want your business or anything like that. Because guess what? A lot of times when they come into your open house, they're lying about having an agent because they don't want to be Boris <laughs> by you. It's really true. It really so is. do that. Because even like a lot of times we have we're ended up representing buyers and they're like, yeah, we didn't actually have an agent. And when you're at your open house, I don't know what sign-in sheets you're using. Like, I don't know what you guys do. But Brooke and I have created our own sign-in sheets and everybody gets their own page. So if you come in and I sign in and I'm Phyllis Lynch buyer, as soon as they sign in on my clipboard and they start walking around the house, I now have their sheet. And I got, I great Bobby, three years old, uh, they want a fenced in yard. I am taking notes on their sign in sheet. People that are coming in after them aren't signing in on the little line where they get one line, no. Give them a full sheet When and there's take three notes. people here at the same time, you're gonna remember which one was okay with the town home and which one wanted only a single home because when you go home after to see if you can find anything in the MLS that could potentially work for this person um, you want to make sure that you remembered what you talked about because again listen and that you know they they're hearing that you're listening and you know it helps right okay so um, so then there's this votes okay Brooke and I are not big cold callers Greg you're not either we are not, we don't really like cold calling. We don't really like picking up the phone and people that we don't know. I mean, there has to be some type of a connection. So truth be told, it is my personal philosophy that if you invest your time in people that you know and people that know you, rather than cold calling, you're going to, it's going to be way more effective. Ask for the business, do whatever you have to do. But I do love for sale by owner. Yes. Can I just go back real quick? What yes. does your sign in sheet look like? Do you have a sign, like a, a line for like who is your agent, agent, and like a, yeah. like a line for what is like their address? And yeah, their name, name um, address, phone number, email, email address, phone address, number, address, phone address. number. Are you working with a realtor circle, yes or no? And then if yes, realtor's name and agency or something like that. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, if you see us after we can email it to you, it's just basically something we need Okay, okay. that's it. Perfect. Um, so with a, um, what was I saying? So FISBOs. FISBOs. That's something I love. FISBO, for sale by for owners. For sale by owners. Um, but here's the thing, like everything else we say, you're not looking for the listing. I mean, eventually you are. But if I go to a FISBO, first of all, I'm not calling you on the phone because I hate talking on the phone. I'm fine face to face, so I will knock on your door. We will knock on your door. And we will introduce ourselves. And usually they're like, eh, eh, 
like the hate realtors. Um, so I'm like, I'm Phyllis Lynch. I'm just here to, to let you know that I see I'm a for sale by owner. And we have lots of buyers waiting right now. As you know, it's a seller's market and there's really not much inventory. Would you be opposed to making an appointment with me so I could come in at some point and see your house? So if I had any prospective buyers, I could bring them through. I don't talk about commission. I don't say anything. Usually, usually a for sale by owner is okay with paying what they consider half. Now there's no fixed commission, it would be illegal to say that, but let's just say in their mind they're thinking 6% or 5 and a half, whatever. Usually they'll say to you, well, if you sell it, I'd be willing to give you half. Are you okay with that? Sure, whatever. So at this point, I'm not looking for the listing. All I'm looking to do is make an appointment, get in your house, and get to know you. Once you get in the door, unless they sell, and this is a weird market right now, so chances are they may sell it on their own, but if they don't, you're looking to establish a relationship and then you're going to keep in touch. Hopefully you're gonna have a buyer and if not, maybe reach out to somebody in your office or whatever. Hey, half a load's better than none. I mean, offer them a referral fee or whatever. There's a lot of different things you can do, but the bottom line is get to know that FISBO because eventually if that house doesn't sell, they'll get, they'll give you the list. The thing is too, that like the follow-up is everything. Like you can get in the door, you can get the appointment, you can meet the person, but then if that's all you do, right. you're wasting your time. So like make sure that your follow-up is like awesome and on point and that's what you're doing like with a lot of the time in your deck. Like schedule your, an appointment with yourself in your calendar to do follow-ups or to do, you know, lead generation or whatever it is. Because if you don't have that appointment in your schedule, you're going to go shopping, you're going to go to the grocery store, you're going to go do laundry, you're going to do everything else because it's not in your book. If somebody says, oh, I want to do this from one to two, sorry, I have an appointment. They don't know it's with yourself, but I could do three to four instead. Um, make that, like, it's valuable time to you. This is your bank account. Seriously, treat it that way. And if you don't, then you're probably in the wrong business. And the thing is, you can even offer a for sale by owner. I always say to them, hey, in the event that you do sell it yourself, I'm happy to do the paperwork for you if you need any help putting it together once you do find a buyer. We're not Okay. Okay. I don't do that. Sorry. I've never heard of that. We'll edit. We'll edit. Um, so back in the day. Again, you're gonna <laughs> look for the list. All right, so let's just say now somebody calls you and they say, Okay, I want you to list my house. Megan, I, I, I'm thinking about selling, I'm not sure what I want to do at one, two, three Main Street. Um, so I'm calling you. You're like, okay, what do I do now? So the first thing you do, and probably it's on the phone or in person or whatever. Um, what you want to do is, and Brooke and I and Greg all the time, we, we always say, write, write, write. Whatever they say, write it down. Write it down because no, we're so you extra. Extra going, huh? We're so extra, but seriously. We are forget. extra, but it matters because when you're busy and you're working with 15 different clients at one time, I'm sorry guys, but when you get old like me, you're not. <laughs> We were, I was at a home inspection the other day, Paul goes, what did this house sell for? I'm like, mm. He goes, aren't you the agent? I'm like, yeah, I have no idea. But he can start laying stuff like, starts no, really. to run together. So prior to going on the listing appointment, when we're on the phone, gather as much information as you can. Tell me about your house. Tell me, what do you love about your house? Three bedrooms, it splits, it cake, whatever. Get as much information as you can. Whatever you do, whenever you do it, whether it's a buyer, whether it's a listing, whether it's whatever. The first thing that you want to do when you're talking to a client is ask them, what is your preferred method of communication? Guess what guys, some people hate texting. Some people hate talking. Find out, because what you're going to do is you're going to adapt your style. Or not. What? Or not. You're going to adapt your style to the, like, you gotta do what they want, not what you want. If you're a great texter and all that and they hate texting, you might lose a client. So ask them, what is your preferred method of communication? So if you're talking to them on the phone, you gather all the information, you say, okay, I'm gonna come to your house, house Wednesday at one o'clock, whatever. Before you get there, here's what I said. Now, we walk into a listing appointment, we don't usually have anything with us. We bring nothing. Now, there's a lot of agents that go in with their, and we used to years ago, with their nice fancy notebook and all their production of all their sales and how great they are and who really cares? 
The seller doesn't Boring. care. Yeah. Seller could care less. In fact, if, if I was a seller, if I was a seller and somebody showed me that, I'd be like, I don't like you. You're stuck on yourself, and I'm not listing my house with you. No, but so we don't go in there to promote ourselves. We go in there to promote what is great about their house. So if I hang up the phone with you, Megan, and I say I'm a promoter, I'm going to run you some comps. We'll go, comps? What's a comp? Watch what you say to people because even though it's your lingo, they might not have a clue what you're talking about. I'm going to run you some comparable sold listings, homes that are similar to yours that have sold in the last six months. And I'm going to email them to you ahead of time, Meg, so that you can just take a look at them. Of course, now until I see your house, I can't give you my like opinion of value. But once I send you them, at least you'll know what's going on in your area. And then once we see you, we can give you some staging tips. And, and that's it. And we, we're very light. We keep it very light. Whatever you say you're going to do, whether it's this or anything else, of course, do it. Because there's nothing worse than when somebody promises you they're going to have comps to you and they don't have them or whatever. So if you're going to send comps, make sure you send them. When we send the comps, if you have a plan, a marketing plan of action for a listing, and we have that too, we can share it with you guys later if you want. Marketing plan of action meaning what we're going to do once, once we, we list your house so that you can have an idea of what to expect. If you want to attach that, that's fine. We used to have a listing presentation that we attached to it. Honestly, right now, we really don't do any of that. Um, because I just feel from our experience that it's really not about anything other than when we get there, we're like, did you have a chance to review our listing presentation? They're like, oh, no, not yet. We'll do that later. Yeah, so how much do they really care when they say that? So, okay, so that's what we do. So now we've run the comparable. So you kind of kind of have an idea of what you're looking at. And it's not a bad idea if you have time to do a drive-by before you go to the house, if possible. You don't have to, but sometimes it's kind of nice. Because sometimes what you see in public records might not be right. Sometimes it might be listed as a cape and you get there and it's a rancher and you just ran comps for capes. So sometimes it's a little helpful. And again, you can ask those questions on the phone too, but the more information you have, the better. You know, you can look at Google Maps to look down on the house from the internet and see what it looks like too. So we go to the house and we get there. Yeah, so when for, we knock on the door, I don't give them my card or anything yet. I'm like, hi, you know, I'm broke, bills, whatever. And once they invite us in, we have our notebooks in hand. I have the address at the top of the property. I have their names at the top of the property. And I have the date on the top of my notebook as to when I was there. Because sometimes you're not going to list it right away. It might be in six months from now. And then when you fold back through your notebook, you can say, oh, I went on this in uh, August. Let me check in with them and see how it's made out. Okay, so we go there with our notebook and we walk in the door. And we're going to introduce ourselves and blah, blah. And they're going to say, okay, come on in. And I'm going to, first thing I'm going to, one of the first things I'm going to say is, do you mind if I take notes? You can go ahead and take notes, but I've, we found that, that it, they respect you a lot more if you ask if you can take notes. And bring a notebook. Don't take it, and don't take them in your phone. Mm -hmm. Because if you were taking them in your phone, you'd be like this the entire listing of women. Mm -hmm. And what does it look like you're doing? Texting or not, you're not paying attention. And if there to is that. something you have to do on your phone or look for, I always excuse myself with regard to that listing. I don't want to make calls when I'm on a listing, but I say, oh, by the way, I'm just looking this up for you to find out. Like, I don't want them to think I'm playing on my phone. So, people, so we always take notes. And as you're taking us through your home, they're going to say, this fireplace, oh, my great grandfather built this fireplace out of the stone that came from the barn down at Stony Bank Road. And it's so beautiful. And then we custom made the mantle. Okay, well, Bingo, that's important to them. That is going to be like a highlight in our remarks about like this amazing stone fireplace. Because guess what? She was like so excited to tell us about it. It obviously means something to her. So focus on what's important to them. And you're gonna go through the whole house and you're gonna to continue to take notes about anything. If, even if it's about them and what they're going through right now and all that crazy stuff. Because again, it's what you're gonna follow up and talk about with the next time you're there. Um, Usually our listing appointments are not one and done. A lot of times they're two-step listing appointments. Usually, I couldn't even tell you the last time that we just went to a half mile and listen. Oh. I do a lot of two-steps. Like somebody will say, can you just come look? Like I'm not sure what I need to do here. And, and as we walk through the house, usually they'll say, you know, like, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? And we always make sure that we say, hey, this is just our opinion. 
It is our goal to get you as much as we can for your home. So these are just our opinions. You can take them or leave them, but here's our goal. You know, we move. And then a lot of times and... we like so. A lot of times people will ask you for your advice. And then a lot of times I when I go in, I say, Do you want our advice on staging, moving things around? updates stuff like that because sometimes they don't want your advice on it and they don't want to do anything so that could potentially cost you a listing if you say hey i think you should do this and do that they might you might lose a listing because of that so i definitely always ask do you yeah. want the advice or not and a lot of times we'll say no we and they might say yeah let me know but we always say hey now just think if you, if you don't feel like painting this pink room white or whatever that's okay Definitely don't have to. you don't have to this is just our advice to hopefully appeal to more people but these are just suggestions now somebody when we first started said they wanted to talk about the actual listing presentation who asked that was it you heather mm -hmm. so again i'm not sure um so when you're talking about the listing presentation are you talking about what happens when you go to the house like what we're talking about now yeah like what goes to the house and then like you know like the follow-up also i guess like when you're talking about like the marketing plan and so like right. as far as like a presentation so i guess our presentation is pretty much like before we even meet you so like once i talk to you on the phone and you tell me a little bit about your house in our signature line we have our zillow reviews and stuff like that and i would advise you guys whether you've worked with somebody in the past or it's family and friends say, hey, Heather, would you mind going to my Zillow? You know, we've been friends for 10 years. You know how I operate. Give me a good Zillow review. It doesn't have to say you sold me my house. Nothing like that. Just say, oh, I've worked with Heather. Her follow-up's awesome. She's always on the ball with what she says, whatever it is. But ask your family and friends now for reviews on Zillow, on Trulia, Realtor.com, all that stuff, because that could be testimonials for you now to share with prospective clients. And the thing is, Heather, they're, I mean, there are a lot of people that do look at that, but honestly, I find that most people really don't care about what you've done. But they what I'm saying about is, what you're so when do. we send you that initial email and we say, Heather, it was so great talking to you on the phone. We're looking forward to meeting you Tuesday at four. I've attached below some comparable homes that are similar to yours. Now I won't give you a value until I've seen your blah, blah. Feel free to review me on Zillow. Read my review. But I'm saying for these people, Brooke, that don't have anything yet. I, I guess she has what, what's a listen to your right okay so that's what we do but i guess what i'm trying to get at is you're a newer agent right yeah okay so i think what i would do obviously you don't have that but it's a great idea of what's brooke saying to do that so at this point in time let's just say somebody wants you to come look at their house you might not have anything to put there i would share the comps the comparable sold listings like we said and i would also we'll share with you our marketing plan of action and i would just let them know here's what we plan to do for you we're going to get a photographer in. We're going to help you to with staging if you choose to. And we have a list we can show you. Other than that, just going there and paying attention to their wants and needs, I don't really know that you need a formal fancy presentation other than letting them know what you're going to do for them. Or what do you guys do? What do you, have, what do you suggest for that? We, we have lots of scripts that we pull from, you know, different sources. Uh, but if you're just asking about um, Like a, a listing presentation. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we've had other classes. We just had a class a couple weeks ago um, with Kathleen and, oh my God, come on guys. Sam. Sam thank you. Ooh, senior moment. Um, <laughs> and they actually shared their listing presentation. So they do have a family They, they do. Now, they're each a little different. Um, they are heavier on the paperwork. But, I, I mean, I, when, I, when I was selling, I'm like you, I don't like to kill trees. So I would send a couple of uh, uh, things in the email prior, and I would show up bare minimal. Because again, I mean, I'm, I don't even bring listing docs with me, and I know that's shame on me. I know okay. that was my next question. Yeah, like, would you bring the stuff for them to sign, like at the house, or do you do that in like a follow-up email? And, it depends know, on the yeah. client. Yeah, it just depends. On and I, I, I'm not, I'm not, you know, like. That's, I'm not saying that it's age-based or anything, but a lot of times, like your younger, newer, more techie people will tend not to want to sign things in paper. Mm -hmm. Everyone's like, different. We just, we're in and out, um, honestly, usually in like a half an hour. Yeah, no, we it's did. It's just like tour in the home and take it. Yeah, it is. And I just had somebody that's 68 that didn't want to do anything on a computer and wanted to come into the office and sign it for that. Right. We're dealing with that right now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So Brooke and I had a listing appointment last week. And it was like two hours long because she wanted us to go through all the forms. We had to help her fill out the seller. Just and we don't, oh you know, we obviously, we don't 
tell her what to put, and we don't put our pen to that, but we had to read the questions. Read every her. question. And then that. she would answer them. So you're going to deal with that. So, But Heather, in answer to your question, we don't bring a ton of stuff. We really don't. And, and again, we just mostly, I think they really just care about what are the values, what is my house worth, what are you going to do for me? We'll share with you our marketing plan of action. I really think that that's all you need. I mean, people just, people are busy. They really don't want you in their house for very long. Yeah. And the faster you're in and out, the better. I would say, as a newer agent, always carry a listing packet with you in case they say, I'm ready to list right now. We do everything through DocLoop or Doc, yeah, yeah, DocLoop. Doc. So we always say, would you rather sign electronically? And usually it's a yes, but sometimes it's a no. So you could always have that with you and always keep it in your car just in case. Can I tell you what, what you just, yeah. I, I just, so, you know, Phyllis and Brooke are like top listing agents. They're mega agents, you can tell. They know their stuff, They're so, the energy is great. I mean, that's why I love having them. That's why we're all over the place. You know, we're so, so all over the place, sorry. It, no, 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 no this, is, this is awesome. But if you talk with half a dozen other top agents, you might get some slightly different approaches. It's not that you guys need to Break everything down to well, Phil said I should do this. Right, exactly. This is what works for them. Right. Um, and you know, it's the, the proof is in the pudding, as it would say. So what you guys do, if you pick up a, you know three or four ideas that they um, do on a regular basis for you to implement, that's great. You don't have to be a carbon copy, uh, but this is awesome information. You absorb it. You. you Use what works for you. They're not big phone people. I was never a big phone per person. Yet, what do we do every morning? Power hour. We go over phone scripts right. because it's still the fastest way. Because it takes a little time to nurture a relationship. Mm -hmm. um, so, do you want to wait six months for a deal, or do you want to get one sooner? Use the people you know. I love the VIP. I mean, that's just yeah. you know, it's a different mindset for how you think of, of your sphere. But don't get caught in the weeds here is what, really what I'm just trying to say. Yeah. Take all this great information and use it as well. And as far as marketing, once we get the listing, someone asked about what do we do to market after we get the listing. I mean, a ton with social media. Um, so just to let you guys know, once we put their listing into the MLS, it auto-populates to, I think, about 700 different websites, like what, like Property Shark, like ones you've never even heard of, um, Homes.com, Redfin, all those, prop, all those. So like let people know too, your home's going to be out there, um, which is great. So there's that. We do a ton with Facebook again. Yeah, we do our just listed. We might do a client email saying we just listed this beautiful home in Springfield, blah, blah, blah. That could be a client email. Um, postcards once in a while um, yeah you know here's our featured listings and stuff like that in not in this market we would door knock the neighborhood and we say hey we just wanted to let you know we just listed number two over here um, if you know anybody looking to move in here and you know what, what? I don't do know right like a door knocking I'm sorry but it never gets old because you're face to face mm -hmm. um, you can pick up the phone and call all day long and I'm not knocking that but I think statistically if you pick the Keller Williams listing, even if it's not your own, as long as you ask the listing agent, um, hey, may I knock around your listing? Open house or not, it doesn't matter. All you gotta do is print an MLS sheet, one piece of paper, door knock with your card, and you know what? Hey, hey I'm Phyllis Lynch with Keller Williams, just wanted to let you know. Our office just listed one, two, three down the street. We would love to let you know that. If you have any family or friends that are interested, please share the listing. Now, it probably takes about 30 seconds and usually it might be like, okay, thank you. It's kind of like the FISBO door knocking, but guess what? Or the open house door knocking or whatever. You can do that every day, all day. Pick any listing you want in this office. If you say, I don't know what to do, I'm a new agent, I had nothing to do, well, go door knock. It's nice out. Do it. It's scary. I'm not going to say it's easy. I'm not going to say that drunk monkey is like, oh, God, this is here. I'm not going to do it. But I tell you guys. Don't like, ever go in. It's yeah. <laughs> it's a numbers game, and whether you are knocking door knocking fizzbos or sitting open houses to a Sunday, maybe to a month, whatever. If you do it, you're going to be successful, but you have to do it. You have no boss. You're your boss. Maybe Bart's your boss. No, I'm not, I'm not the boss. I'm not the boss. You're your yeah, boss. That's why it's so important to make appointments with yourself, guys. Like like a lot of times, I I have people, then they say, "Well, I just got my license. What do I do now?" 
sit down at your computer, make an appointment with yourself, and do not get up for the next two hours, and keep your notebook with you, and take notes about every little list thing that you did, and keep your planner there, and literally just sit there and call people, email people, text people, Facebook message people, put some good valuable information on people. Let people Work know you're it. in real estate if you're brand new. You know what I mean? Hey, I'm in real estate. I need referrals. Who do you know? Not, do you know anybody? Who do you know? Look in the buy or sell. Go knock on their door. Knock on your friend's door and be like, hey, here's my new card. I'm in real estate. You know, I'm looking to to obviously get some, it sounds weird, I know, but it never gets old. And as many years as we've been in the business, Maureen, she could tell you, my gosh, she's a top producer back there. She's got like markets tied up because when they think of Drexel Hill or whatever, they think of Maureen, why? It doesn't just happen like that. It's because she keeps it out there. Like you've got to keep it out there. You've got to keep asking for listings. You've got to keep promoting yourself. You're going to run out of money and you're going to run out of business if you don't. Your antennas have to You can't be rest on your laurels. You know, once you build it, you've got to keep it. You've got to keep it. Part is part. And you can't be a secret agent and a real estate agent. No. Sure. Does anyone have any questions? Comments? Wait, I have another. Um, don't be afraid to talk about real estate no matter where you are. So my brother just started in real estate school. He's in his like second half. Um, and he called me the other night, he went to one of his friend's weddings, and he called me the next morning, like early in the morning, and he's like, guess what? I think I just got my first lead for January. <laughs> and I was like, you did? And, and I'm, like, yeah. I'm like, from where? And he's like, the wedding. I was talking, and the, the kid was like interested in potentially buying a house in the new year, and blah, 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 and he was talking to an agent before, but he didn't really hit it off with them. And, the guy told me that I'm a very likable person and this, that, and the other. So I'm like, well, that's awesome. Now follow up with it and make sure you continue to, you know, work it, right? And note in January so that you don't forget about them. But like, you never know where your next lead's going to come from. And yes, it's January, but hey, January's pretty close. And let me tell you what I said to him. I, he, he said to me, so I'm like, mom, what do I do now? Like, okay, he says he's gonna buy, I'm not licensed yet. I'm like, look, now you guys are licensed. Everybody's licensed here, right? Mm -hmm. So you're not even in the same boat. But I said to him, look, say to them, Hey, Bill, I know you're not looking until January, but I have a great idea. Why don't I get you, get Haley, that's his fiance, to set you up on an automated search. Now, you guys can say, why don't you let me set you up on the search? It's free, it doesn't cost anything. I don't mind doing it at all. I'll do it for you. Just tell me what areas you like, what price point, and then I'll start sending you the listings. They come automatically to you. They don't go through me. So if you see anything that looks crazy, I, I didn't pick it, but it will match your search criteria. That way you'll start to get an idea of what's out there. And then when you're ready, call me, whatever. If there's anything you want to say, let me know, take a peek. Guess what, guys? You're acting like you're doing them a favor. I don't mind, I'll set it up for you. It only takes a couple minutes. How about I do that for you? And they're usually like, oh yeah, that's a great idea. Like, put it out there. Can I share something? Yes. It's just been 28 years doing this and it never occurred to me. My son lives in Chatter Park and they they moved in and he, he um, proposed the day of settlement in front of the house when they came back. He had a he had a map that said, Krista, I love you, will you marry me? So when he got down, it was in the rain. He had a, he had a hurricane in January. So the computers were out here. My son looked at, at me at the table and he's going, I think I'm going to throw up. You know, not only was he buying a house, but he was proposing. So anyway, they're in, and COVID comes. They had to postpone the wedding till this past July. Everything was crazy. They got a chance to get in there and do their stuff, but they never really got to know a lot of the neighbors because then, you know, everybody was in. And then, then the winter came last year, so they finally got to do their normal block party. And he said, Mom, come over to the block party. And he said, you can work your way up and down the street. And he said, I can't really introduce you to a lot of people because I don't know them either, oh. but I'm going to find out. But he said, you know, you could just, he said, Mom, you know, you can just talk to somebody and the, the conversation will come up. Oh, and the DJ recognized me as I was going, he said, wait a minute, you're Maureen Inglesby. And we got to talking about some oldies things because he was older too. And, uh, and I told him that um, he, he was playing this one song that when, when line dances were big years ago, I used to always dance to, uh, Can't Hurry Love. And, and, and I looked up and down the street and nobody was dancing a line dance. And so I was doing my own thing and he was laughing. So he got back and I, he cut it off because nobody was dancing. So he went to the next one and I said, he didn't play it through the whole thing. I said, I'm back there dancing by myself. So he, he said, Maureen Inglesby's here. She's a realtor. Um, oh, the bus. He gave me a, a commercial, and then he got out and danced "Can't Hurry Love" with me. Oh. <laughs> so now that was a weird happenstance, but it occurred to me that there really isn't an issue with you when you sell a house to a buyer saying, "You know what? When you have your block party, 
I'd love to come over and see great and, and meet some of your neighbors. That's a great Not idea. Not for the purpose of anything else. Just say, I'd love to come over and meet some of your neighbors so I can you know, see who they are. So tell me when your block party is and I'll bring um, 10 pies or whatever to your block party. We do it sometimes when we, after we sell the house, then we bring a dinner over or something like that. But, you know, invite me to your block party and right. I'll, I'll pay for some food and and that's a great house. idea, Maureen. And what we try to do a lot of times is we tell people, if you have a housewarming party and you invite me, we'll bring the food. We'll mm -hmm. hire the okay. caterer or yeah. we'll have a caterer. I did so. that, but I never took it to the block party. And that's that fun, fun, so fun at busy. the block party. And when we hire a caterer or whatever and go to their housewarming party, they're bragging about you the entire mm -hmm. time. Exactly. So it's like you're like the shining star because they wouldn't be here at this party if it wasn't for you. So and you know what guys, it only takes like one lead, like all these things we are talking about, like say you work a, four, if you work 40 hours doing what we're talking about, door knocking, making phone calls, whatever. <laughs> oh my God, like can you imagine, seriously, like, it, yeah, you really would be like very well. Like if you do these things, it works. And the thing is, if you got, let's just say all week and you got one lead, doing all the things we tell you, you're going to get a lead if you don't, let's just say you got one. Do you know what one lead means? Like, let's just say all you did was send, sell them a $300,000 house. I'm not making light of that, two fifty, dollars whatever. I mean, once you're out of productivity or whatever, you can be talking $9,000. Like, is that a bad week's pay? No, no. And that's for only no, one. No. It's amazing. And I have news for you guys. If you do it, it works. Like, I don't know how much more to say than that, but it does work, but you've got to do it. And you've got to get up, and you've got to get dressed up, and you've got to show up. If you're going to hang out at home, and you're going to just stick around, and you're going to get pool and a million dollars, get up. Come to the office. And that's the thing, too. Like, you will be so much more productive. Like, I know, like, I, so now, as you guys know, I have little ones. Um, so it's distracting. And if I'm home, I catch myself going throwing a load of laundry or washing dishes or doing stuff like that. But like if I'm physically in the office, I'm here for the day and I am working all day long. So get up, show up, and you're going to And you know, I don't, don't think that it's, I mean, partner up with someone. Like if you're not comfortable door knocking by yourself, pick a partner. I mean, maybe you don't know anybody else. I don't know. I guess you guys are in productivity or whatever you're doing. I'm sure there's somebody that feels as nervous and weird as you do. Pick a neighborhood, pick a partner, and do it now, and work as a team. I mean, you don't have to be a team, per se, but hey, have a buddy with you. I mean, I have Brooke with me, and you, you know, we always say, don't go in houses. Well, we went in one one time. No, well, she we went, went in one, one, and I followed her, and I'm literally looking around, like, for something to hit this guy over the head with, <laughs> because I'm like, if he takes, he goes, oh, let me show you my finished basement, and she's like, okay, <laughs> and I'm standing at the top of the steps, and I'm like, oh my God. Um, it was fine. Okay. It was fine. And I'm literally standing there and she's halfway down and I'm like, okay, gotta go down. So I go down. He shows us the weight room and I'm like, oh, I'm not doing this. And she's oh literally up there and I'm like, he looking at these, the I'm looking at these dumbbells. I'm like, I'm going to crack this guy over the head. Oh my God, I was so scared. And then we get out. I'm like, what the hell? I'm like, Sorry. That's the end of the drive. I'm like, oh, this is it. There's a matting. Thank God he was fine. Anyway, I think our time is up. So does anybody have any questions? I mean, we could talk forever. We were totally all over the place. Yeah, I saw you guys got one thing out of that. Questions? Right. Comments? Do you guys know any people on Instagram? I do not. I know. I just started to on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> Have you gotten anything from it? No. I know um, Morgan Disparry does a lot with Instagram, yeah. and she actually has gotten a quite quite a few leads from Instagram. Yeah, I'm sure it's um, great. So I don't. I'm not an Instagram member. Keep it up. I'm sure it can't will. hurt. It's just one, one more free way to get yourself yeah. out there. I have a question. Yes. Do we have your permission to share your listing? All the time. Yeah. Always. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. For sure. Put it out there. We'd rather somebody sell it in here. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. you just keep in mind, like I said, before you do a lot of like uh, geographic farming and things like that, take the time to make sure that you're farming the people you know and making sure that everybody you can think of is on that database. That really needs to come first. The geographic farms are awesome. And with in the geographic farms. Don't pick a million different neighborhoods either. Like that's what we used to do. We used to send a postcard every time we had a listing. We would send that neighborhood a postcard. Well, guess what? They'd get one or two postcards, and then that was the end of it. So, what is that really giving us in return? Nothing. 
Um, so keep your, like, maybe there's one specific neighborhood that you want to focus on and send it to that exact neighborhood every single time. Um, because if you're too broad, you're never going to be able to keep up with all of that. And if you're looking for listings, go to the MLS or ask, I don't know how you would figure it out, Barb, but find out, is that you say like, there? I love no. Springfield. I want to, I really want a listing in Springfield. Pick that area, find something in this office or a few things that have been sold or have been listed and set yourself up for a geographic farm and go door knocking and introduce yourself and say, we just listed. 423 you know, and um, I'm Phyllis Lynch and blah, blah, blah. Like, just don't be afraid to get out there and establish some new, if that's what you're looking to do. It's just another source of trying to get more business. So. And any half hours? I mean, it was all, yeah. I mean, I, back to back notes of everything. I really like um, the, the messaging people about like, you know, the competition. But one thing I was just wondering is like, what if there are people that you haven't spoken to in a long time? So long what? Or just, I always just start at like, hey, Holly, I hope all's going well. Or like, you know, maybe, no, I don't even actually connect that with anything personal because it's more, this conversation is about me, which most of mine are not. So I just say, I hope all is well. Yeah. Um, and then I go into that and then they might not even respond, yeah. but if they do, and then, and then you can engage in conversation and kind of twist it to be about them. Mm -hmm. And if they do give you a lead, Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hey, Holly, thanks so much for that. I really appreciate it. May I have your address? I have something I'd like to send you. And she's gonna give me her address, and then she's going on my mailing list, and she's gonna get on my junk mail, and continue to give me a referral for the future, because now I have her address. Um, but definitely, 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 whenever, whether wherever the lead comes from, send a thank you card. As soon as you get it, if it's not somebody that you're currently talking with, send a text. Hey, so-and-so just called me. Thanks so much for, for referring them. I promise I'm gonna take great care of them. I, I don't know if it's the right thing to do, but I send ten dollar Chick Fil A gift cards, Shh. and I say, and there she goes. Thanks so yeah. much. Have lunch on me, and um, for thinking about me. Have lunch on me. And no, I don't actually really do that, but pretty cool. <laughs> but you take them out for lunch, right? Yeah. Find your friend we're gonna meet there, and then you're gonna buy. <laughs> so, but but again, it's all about building relationship and asking for the business. Just you guys. If you want to make money, you got to let people know what you do. Like Barb said, you don't want to be the secret agent. So just ask. Ask and tell. I mean, really go. Let everybody you know know what you do for a living. So what are you guys going to go do to get a listing today? We're doing nothing. We're nothing. Anybody else going to do anything to get a listing? Oh, I, sorry. I'm one round hop for me. Um, to get listings also is like target 55 plus communities. That's what we do. Um, don't steal our business, but <laughs> okay, so if you sit an open house at a 55 plus community, most of the time the people are looking to downsize. Um, so usually they have a house to sell, which eventually can lead you to a listing, um, which is awesome. So we love our 55 plus communities. How would you break into one of those if you don't have a listing or know anyone that has a listing? Probably. Just like postcards and letters and stuff like that. If you want to start listing stuff there and oh. become more relevant there. Yeah, I know. Like, who's that agent that does like Fox Field? She sends a lot in there. Is that? Sorry, I didn't mean to stop you on camera. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, the one on Smithridge Road. Not I know what you mean by that. Lynn? Yes. <coughs> Thank you. And she does a lot in that specific neighborhood, but she targets it. Like, she sends nice mailers. Well, Greg's like saying, that. how do you get into it? Actually, you just start mailing. Yeah, that's yeah. what, yeah, okay. Yeah. Pick any neighborhood you want, and you can start mailing. I know some of the 55 plus communities, for example, you can't do it. Yeah, they're almost all There are all communities where you can't do it. But. Now, I live in a manufactured home. It's called Winterset Farms Manufactured Home Community. And usually when people move in there, they're usually downsizing. So it's funny because these guys hate working Winterset because they do, they're do. they like 80 to 150,000. It's Berna Valley. Um, half of it's Berna Valley, half of it's Delaware. But I can't tell you the business that they bring me because when I sit in an open house there, I host, host an open house or I list one, the calls they bring, almost everyone has a house to sell. So 
what Brooke was saying earlier about, you know, some people say, oh, I'm only gonna list over 500,000. Guess what, guys? Sometimes when you're listing like downsized type of homes, it brings you not only a buyer, but it, or it brings you that listing, but it brings you other buyers that have houses to sell. So there's been times when I've listed these homes, like Brooke and I do a lot with Creekside Village, it's 55 plus community, but I also do a lot in Winterset. Some of them, one like $80,000 or $120,000 listing has made me a multitude of sales. Mm -hmm. So don't knock it. Don't knock that $30,000 buyer. Plus the people call. in those two fifty dollars and down there, they really appreciate what you do for them. Yeah. The ones in the five, six, seven hundred thousand, oh, so they true. sold a couple of houses we before. They're much that. more demanding. Oh, wow. And much but the, more the, the lower wow. income, the, the lower so priced true. houses, they just appreciate every so possible thing. How about my first time home buyers with two hundred fifty thousand dollars listing something long? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. You can just have that conversation. It's so, so much easier business. So, right. well, thank you guys for your time. Thank you.